welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the BT Neanderthal Blessed Hammerden Guide. Today, we are going to be showing you everything that's involved with the Blessed Hammer Paladin. So, Blessed Hammer, for those that don't know, is this skill right here. And we use this aura right here. So, just a little quick showcase of what we're capable of. I'm using the standard variant, which you'll find on the variant section below of the Max Roll Blessed Hammerden Guide, or Blessed Hammer Guide. And we're just going to quickly showcase that we can decimate the seal bosses and Diablo with extreme ease on this build. This is an activity that's common with the Hammerden in general. I'll show you a couple different techniques. I'll show you a couple different spots that are good. But just a quick demonstration of what we're going to be doing here today. As you can see, Diablo has nothing on us. We absolutely decimated him. And even dropped his terror essence. So, there we go. So, first things first here. In the guide. Over here. And I'll leave the link in the description below. As well as, uh, you know, probably the planner, maybe, I guess, of the current character I'm playing on ladder. But, what we have going on here. Also, it's me. Thank you, me, for being here. Um, we have the introduction. And this just kind of explains what's going on with... The character you know if it catches your interest at all like I said it covers the primary skills that we're playing with here and this is the embedded version of the gear like the optimal ideal standard variant right so it's very similar to what I'm actually using right now in game when I just showcased um, if you do need help leveling a paladin in the first place there's a paladin leveling guide you can click on here um, and then it goes quickly over the pros and cons so it's very tanky there's almost no immunes these are a huge benefit to playing a hammerdin it also does insane amounts of damage in the chaos sanctuary so it also has uh, a very specific play style that can be repetitive it is a very high skill cap but um very low entry level so if you like you know it's easy to learn and difficult to master per se to learn the positioning of exactly where you should be and how you should teleport and what gear you should wear and all that stuff um we have the standard variant skill tree here that just goes through point for point what you should actually be putting points into and how it might look again a lot of that stuff will be covered in the uh guide here for paladin leveling but down here in under damage, we have Blessed Hammer and Holy Bolt. These are the two things that we're going to be using for damage. Um, I'll show you a little bit more with the variants in a little bit. But these little asterisks are showing that it's based on faster cast rate. And you can read those skills yourselves. Um, as you can see, here we have the orange, which means FCR. The green is IES, and then the gray just doesn't use either. It's just either a passive ability or an aura, something like that. So these are the things that we're going to be using. We'll be even uh, using this on utility and in some cool variants that we'll get to in a minute. So then you have the attributes, and typically with the attributes here, you just want to put enough points in to wear your gear, enough strength points in to wear your gear. And then you want to max out your block chance. So chance to block, 75% is the highest it can go. And on a Hammerdin, you really want to max this out. Mostly any Paladin, pretty much, that has a shield. You want to make sure you get enough dexterity to max out your block chance. Now my numbers look a little finicky from where, where it might say, and I'll get to all that stuff in a bit. But just remember, enough strength to wear your gear, enough dex for max block with holy shield, make sure that's active, 
and then everything else goes into vitality. We don't even touch energy. Um, and as we talked about here with the skills, it's pretty much the exact same thing as you'll see with the skills section up here. Now, for gear options, like, we have a ton of listings here, and you can go through everything. But the main things you want is faster cast right here. This is absolutely crucial to the build. It absolutely just everything revolves around the faster cast rate breakpoints, which are 75 FCR faster cast rate and 125 FCR. Those are the two crucial breakpoints that you swap back and forth between um, all the time, or at least I do. Um, you can play a standard version, which this standard version at the very top that it's showcasing is a 75 FCR build. But I personally play all of them. Like, I love Hammerdin. It's my favorite class. I absolutely love the play style and the positioning and how OP it is. And you can just help anybody with act any activity. It's like the one of the only characters in the game that can do every single activity with relative ease. So it's pretty cool. Um, but you can look at the gear options and stuff like that. Just remember that faster cast rate is very important now the farming spots we're going to be doing is this this character kind of unlocks the entire game because what i said earlier there's not very many immunities so that means you can go wherever like a lot of characters like cold damage characters fire damage all this stuff they have a very limiting factor and that is uh immunities that they come across so they only have so many places they can farm the Hammerton doesn't actually come across any of this stuff. Nearly. There's only like two spots in the game where there's immunities. And one of them you can even deal with with your uh, Holy Bolt. And that is uh, this skill right here. I actually maxed out Holy Bolt. And, uh, or I added a bunch of points in the Holy Bolt. And this does damage to Wave 2 Bale. It's very, very strong. So, it's situational, but it's uh, it's very good. So you don't really deal with a whole lot of immunities, and anything here with the starter check mark means you can do it with like really bad gear. Um, things without that, you could still do it, but it's you have to know a little bit more of what you're doing. It's not as easy. Um, all those things. So, and then it gives you a list of that. The mercenary, I highly recommend. Oh, where are we? The mercenary, I highly recommend a. Act 2 Defensive Aura. Well, I guess it's not called Defensive Aura anymore. It's Holy Freeze um, Aura. This is going to be very good for crowd control and increased survivability on the build. Some people can go Defiance. Some people even go Might Aura. But I highly recommend Holy Freeze. It's just good for the build. It allows you to stay in the position you want to be in. Because like I said, positioning is very important on this build. So, would recommend that. Uh, Insight, Fortitude, and Indarl's Visage is good. Currently, I am running just whatever I could get. We have uh, Colossus Volge Insight. It's a elite base. You know, that's very good. Then we have Fortitude, and then a Vampire Gaze, and I just threw an IS Jewel just because I had it in the stash. So, um, but yeah. Also, some other things we're going to get into in a second is the Variants. And that is why I have like a 210 amulet. There's some, this is just a cool build. I absolutely love this build in general. So we have play style. Now this thing is actually pretty important. I'll just show you again a little bit more of what we're actually doing and how to deal with all this stuff. Like I said earlier, we have the Holy Bolt. We use that against undead magic immunes. Like I said, there's only Wave 2 that's immune to us. Sometimes there's uh, stuff in the tombs and places we don't really farm. That, uh, you know, there's magic immunes and you can use that holy bolt against the undead ones. Um, but I'll just give you another demonstration real quick of a chaos run. I'll explain a little bit in the play style how we're actually going to be manipulating the field to our advantage. So we go to River of Flame. There's other places you can go. Like I said, in the farming spots, 
the only act that has very small amounts of places you can farm is the lost city and the ancient tunnels because there are magic immunes down there you can even kill them with holy bolt but it's just like you would rather be playing at hammerton not a holy bolt you know what i mean so it's uh so our main home is the chaos sanctuary because of our additional damage to undead and demons it says damage to undead but it also does damage to demons as well so it's very very strong in the chaos sanctuary because everything is demon or undead in here so first thing we did was we buffed ourselves with the cta if you don't have a cta that's fine maybe sometimes you have enigma and you can use uh like a teleport staff on swap or something like that to move here and there like i'll just play as if i don't have enigma first to give you a little demonstration so uh, do that and this would be I need to actually hotkey charge. You use a lot of vigor and charge is what you do. And then you would typically have a teleport staff on swap. You'll be doing a lot of kiting. It's a little bit clunky in here because they're being annoying. But you'll be using charge and vigor. But remember to always swap over to concentration aura. Or else you're going to be doing less damage. Now we have a pretty dangerous pack. I'm going to try to get through this. And you kind of just want to like cast hammers around the pack if it's dangerous. And then you can go in for the source. When you get the opportunity. And that's a little bit of what you do. Like anything following you. You just keep running. And it... And it goes through that hammer field is what we call it usually. So now that we have that out of the way. Now that we'll say that we're end game gear. And this is what it usually looks like. So I want to kill packs of elites. Because these are guys are good experience. Good items. You know all that stuff. And you want to teleport like right on top of the elite packs. So as soon as you see like the name pop up. You just teleport on them. Immediately switch to concentration. And then start spamming hammers. Now, while I'm playing, I'm almost always holding shift. Almost always. So, like, and then show item is something I almost always hold as well. So, I'm doing that because whenever I um, hold show item, it makes the name disappear. Right? Just like that. As you can see, it's flashing. And that will allow you to target more easily what you want to target and also you'll see items that have may, might be dropping from a monster that be uh, walking through your hammer field or whatever um, very important so I'm always holding shift and I just spam left click whenever I need to attack pretty much and then I'm teleporting sw swapping right over to concentration order to make sure I get that extra damage and all that stuff now the important thing here is if you want optimal kills on Diablo, there's a place that you can go right here. And I showcased that in the first run where your hammers have a certain amount of duration or distance that they can go through. And you'll notice that Diablo will spawn right in there as long as there's nobody in the middle. And you can pre-hammer and teleport right on top of them and melt them instantly. It's very good for players 8. So there's a place right here you can pre-hammer for full length on high player count. There's other spots too. As soon as you get used to the pattern, you can start um, playing around the pattern and how it feels. You know, maybe shooting monsters around the corner or dealing with dangerous mobs or being at a perfect distance. So it's like this mob might be very dangerous up close. You can get that optimal distance from the second ring or the third ring. All those different things. And that's kind of where that, like, uh, easy to learn, difficult to master. It's very easy to teleport on a monster and hit him. But it's hard to know exactly in a fight where exactly is all that hammer path going to go and when while the battle's moving around and be able to shoot through doors and all that stuff. So it definitely gets through. Uh, it definitely has a high skill cap. Um, on top of that, like I said earlier, breakpoint's pretty important. Uh, the 75 
and 125 FCR breakpoints here. 10 frames and 9 frames. Very good. Um, it depends on the playstyle you want. And then 48. Now, I don't actually always run with faster hit recovery. You can. It's always going to help. If you get hit, then you recover faster. It's as simple as that. Um, block chance. You don't have to worry about faster block rate because Holy Shield is broken good. And you just have like z like two frames for having zero block rate. Don't have to worry about block rate. Just put on a Holy Shield, you're fine. Uh, use Vigor Aura pretty much any time you're walking to a place or clicking to a place. Whenever you're not attacking, you usually want uh, Vigor Aura. Um, but yeah, so this is the starter variant. And this is just like, hey, you could get this in a day or two after ladder-ish. You know, somewhere around there. It's hard to estimate because RNG is involved. But like, you could get some of this stuff. It might not look exactly like this. Um, but, you know, you could farm some of these things. You can get some things like this here and there. And you could easily play the game, a lot of the game, with the starter variant. And like I said, in the farming spots, that check mark is the starter variant here. So, back to the variants here. This is the standard setup, which is what we're kind of using. And I have some recommendations here. But... This is the fun part of the hammered and there's like so many different things you can do with it. Like I said, you can do anything in the entire game with this character. And when I say that, I mean it. Like, you can do anything. So there's like a standard variant and this is good for more damage. Like we have here. Like 14k hammers. And I'm even using some all res here because I don't have the Annie. I don't have uh, Amara's right now. But we do have some really cool gear set up here. All this stuff is very relevant. And then we have the magic find version, which as you can see, these are all magic find charms. And they have the Annie here once you get that. And this is just stacking so much magic find. This, honestly, the magic find variant is my favorite playstyle of the Hammerdon. You just go around sniping bosses. Everything's about positioning. Target only the bosses, and it's just so much fun to be able to do that. And that uses, like, Wizard Spike instead of Hodo. This setup, like I said, you're doing 14k damage. Now, we can throw a bunch of these things off, right? And we're also at 75 FCR breakpoint. Now, we can throw a bunch of these things off, right? We have, like, Wizard Spike, Telekinesis Ring, which is so cool, and I'll show you that in a sec. And then Haas. And because of what we have here for a setup, we can actually go, just by doing those simple changes, we're now at the 125 FCR breakpoint. And being at 125 FCR, we can just blast through the game so much faster. Like, we'll just throw some of these charms in and crank up our MF, like, with extreme ease again. Charms are organized chat's gonna yell at me but we're still rocking like 9k hammers and we can go out and wreck face and this is kind of the play style for the magic find and i'll show you that in a sec usually you farm like river of flame or uh chaos sanctuary And this is the playstyle for the Magic Find variant, where it's just like, alright, we're only looking for the Elite Packs. It'll be a shiny, oh, I'm looking for it to say Minion, I want something to say Minion. And this is good for a Player's 1 uh, playstyle, because, like I said, you're stacking a bunch of MF. There we go, it's the first pack. You can pretty much one-shot them if your hammer's hit. Then we got champion packs. And we're just looking for the big boss. And we move on. And the cool thing about this is, like I said, you can do this on Battle.net. But the elites are guaranteed to drop an item. And the champions have a very good chance to drop an item. So that's why we can stack a ton of MF and still have a potential to get a lot of good stuff. Like earlier today, I got a Oculus, a few different awesome items 
And there's even an advanced strat that you can also do, which is Chaos Seal Popping. This is just a Chaos strategy in general, but you can check that out. I believe it's called uh, the Chaos Cheese or Chaos Exploit or something. You just teleport to the entrance and uh, teleport back and you'll get all the loot as long as you get back fast. So that's a, that's a little bonus tip. You don't have to worry about that one too much today for the Hammered In Guide. But just remember, you have like hammers that have a duration. Look at all those items that drop because we have 465 magic fine right now. So that's that's my favorite playstyle. I absolutely love that. You can take that build almost anywhere. It's fantastic. Then the Uber setup, and this is also fantastic. Um, I don't have all the gear for it right now on my character. But as you can see, we have the optimal build here. <clears throat> because I don't have a Maras, um, or the reason why I have this is so I can hit the two hundred, uh, the one hundred twenty-five FCR breakpoint. So between the uh, ring with telekinesis and MF, and the amulet with two skills, this allows me to get to 125 with ease so optimally if i can get a 220 that means i could get rid of the ring even though telekinesis is super fun like i can use that on seal pops and stuff or going back to town things like that or going back into the battlefield whatever so and then on top of that we could also use the chance guards otherwise you can just do something simple like throw on the uh, gloves here and now we have, again, we could even throw on like an SOJ or something. We'll throw that ring away. And now we have 125 with a little bit more damage. And we still have 385. So definitely feel free to like change it up, play whatever it is. Just make sure that you're always hitting either the 75 or the 125 breakpoints. With Spirit, it's pretty crucial to get 35, and make sure you make your Spirit in a Sacred Targe that is eventually, um, you know, it's fine if you don't get that immediately, but like, that is what you want to be going towards. The reason for that is it has the highest block chance for the amount of strength that you put in. Now, you could also, if you just like playing 125 all the time and you don't care about pause, then, you know, you could toss the Haas, get another one of these, put it on swap. There's so many things. But just being able to have this on swap allows us to do this variant like I was talking about with Ubers. As you can see, we use Haas, we use Grief, and I'll show you show you that in a second here. And all we have to do, all this stuff is in our stash. As we uh, put it all on. Well, we keep the CTA. There we go. We got all this stuff. We can actually use both of these. And then we have like, you know, charms. If I was going to do Ubers or Declone, whatever it might be, then I can just throw on some lightning resist. Like, for example, lightning resist charms here. Very good. Very strong. Um, and then we have like more life. Things like that are what you're going to want to be seeking. Then we also have like resistance ring, 30 light res. So I might want to throw that on instead. Or like, uh, and then we have cannot be frozen. And now all of a sudden, we're like a smiter. All of a sudden we're a smiter. Like look at that. And then we can just throw on treachery. You know, cast fade. And because we have the skill tree that we have set up here, we have one point fanaticism and we have one point into smite. We're getting a ton of damage just from having grief, from from having crushing blow. We have like 60% crushing blow. We have open wounds, 25%. And this open wounds allows them or prevents them from healing. The crushing blow takes a chunk of their life away. The deadly strike and the damage here on the phase blade just adds 
uh, more damage to combat. Well, the Deadly Strike doesn't with Smite, but if you were to do like some version of Zeal with this as well, there's just so many options with this as well. Um, it's just a really fun build, and you can do anything with it. So, just for an example, I'll go like Smite something real quick. Yeah, Fanaticism also boosts your uh, attack speed by a lot. I'll show you. So, like, we're smiting, right? We're smiting pretty fast. But we put on Fanaticism. And we're just blasting through. And this can be helpful. Just for that additional attack rating. And then once you ever... You know, once you're fighting a boss that is actually super tanky, then once you cast Life Tap, having that additional, like, attack speed is really going to help uh, get more Life Tap procs on yourself to heal. So, it's very strong, and it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> now, let's take a look real quick. Uh, we have Hardcore, which this one is just, you tank up. Crown of Ages is an absolutely insane item. If you can get this item, this is what I used on my 99 grind years ago. Very strong helmet. You still get plus one skills. You get 30 hit recovery. On this build, you want to hit 86 FHR if possible. The break point there. And then... Um, you know, just burr everything up and you have, like, so much damage reduction, you just never die. So, very strong build. And it also does a lot of damage. As I say here, 47% damage reduction, 75 FCR, and you just get so much damage still. Um, but that's a more basic change, you just tank up. You also can put more points in the Holy Shield here. Just for higher block chance, so that way you can put more points into vitality, all those different things. Holy Bolt is kind of a variant that I'm doing here. Like, my character that I'm playing with here is like a variant of a bunch of these together. That's the fun thing about the Hammerdon, is you can just do all of this however you feel. So, the Holy Bolt, like I mentioned earlier, is good for the immunities. And I have 14 points put into here. Like, you don't have to max it out. You don't have to do anything. But it receives a synergy from Blessed Hammer already. Even one point is fine. You can still c clear Wave 2. But if you want to, like, P8 Wave 2 on Bale, you could still do that. Like, eight players in the game, you can still clear it. So, my points are a little bit spread out. The main things you want to actually use for points are Blessed Aim, Concentration, Vigor, and Blessed Hammer. But, like, after that, it's up to you. Like, the whole world is yours. And, you know, I have a guide on each one, whatever playstyle you want to go for, right here. Like, the, the setup, the skill point distribution, the mercenary, all those different things. Um, but it's just, it's really cool. Let's see if I actually have a setup here. Do I actually list? Okay. And there's also a high investment one, which you can do. Which, honestly, this is kind of a niche thing if you get bored. Where you can just put on ice. Remember how I said Holy Freeze was pretty good for the mercenary? You can put ice on an Act 1 mercenary. And it'll just freeze things for you and have Holy Freeze. It's kind of fun. It's not necessary. You could also put Phoenix on your Hammerdon if you're lazy. And you're like, hey, I want to just have Redemption running all the time. This combination, it's very expensive, but hey, if you're just bored, it's not bad. And I've played it before and it's kind of fun. So, um, one more thing I guess I could say. Where is it? Uh, well, I guess it's fine on Ubers. Basically, what you would want to do instead of Treachery on the Uber setup is you would actually want to have Treachery, proc Fade, then swap over to Chains of Honor. 
just to make sure you get that maximum res, the damage reduction, and all that stuff. But you can just run Chains of Honor on your Mercenary. It's a very good base. It's a very good item for him to run as an armor. And then you just run G-Face on him. Just like that. So he can just wear this. And then whatever pull arm insight that you want. You could even run Obedience if you're really feeling sweaty. And you want to do like some P8 Chaos runs. I've done that before in the past as well. Just get like a nice... Uh, you know, Giant Thresher maybe or something with Obedience in it, and that Crushing Blow just shreds bosses. So, like, as fast as I killed Diablo earlier, you can kill him so much faster if you set up your Mercenary to have a lot of Crushing Blow as well. So, definitely don't be afraid to deck out your Mercenary. Um, I feel like this is a pretty complete guide as far as uh, everything I've kind of gone over. I went over, like, the Hut Keys... And, uh, basically what you want to do, whatever you want to do, man, it's, uh, there's so many options. So just definitely check out this guide that's obviously in the description if you want to quickly read over it. But I think that explains everything. Thank you all for watching and hanging out. I absolutely love this build to death. If you have any questions, you can join the Discord or join me on Twitch. Um, make YouTube comments, whatever it is. I would be happy to talk about this character. It is my favorite character in the game. <laughs> so, much love, everybody. You guys are beasts. Spired Helm. It's Ondal's uh, Almighty. Oculus! Ethereal! Yes! GG. Schaefer's Hammer. GG, dude. And almost a perfect Rainfrost. Off by six attack rating. Jeez, dude. The luck is unreal. Grats, man. Hey, not bad boots. Not bad ring. Not the best ring, but not bad. Holy amulet. One to barb skills, 17 all res, mana steel, 20 MF. Jeez. Yes! My first in Darl's Visage, let's go! Oh god, they're killing me. Okay. What is it? It's garbage, but it's my first in Darl's Visage, let's go! There's an Istrin. There we go. It's one. Not bad. 